Let's talk some sports, baby. Take a bye, Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Jones. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby. Nathan Drinkard. I'm your host, Cody Ward. Thanks for spending some of your time with us tonight. As a reminder to all our listeners, besides being on all your favorite podcast platforms, A Drink of Wisdom is also on YouTube with Seat So Segment available. Head on over. And if you like what you hear, we would appreciate your subscription. What's going on, guys? What's going on, y'all? Happy Hello, Friday. Up? We got the beard. We got the drink. And the wisdom is here as well. Let's do it. Let's talk some sports, baby. Got to soak it in for a second, you know. In episode 64, we talk NBA dynasties and conclude our NFL draft preview coverage with the AFC and NFC West divisions. But first, ESPN is delivering a boon to sports fans across the world Saturday, or Sunday, rather. The 10-part Michael Jordan documentary, originally slated for release in June, will premiere with episodes 1 and 2 on Sunday, April 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, as well as several other streaming services with live TV. The Last Dance mostly focuses on the 1997-1998 season, where the Bulls completed their second three-peat in seven years, but will also focus on the other title runs and Jordan's overall career. It's kind of an unprecedented look at the career of whom many consider the greatest player of all time and the six titles he won along the way. So, Drink, what are you most looking forward to in this documentary? Well, you know, first of all, let me say thank you, Michael Jordan. Thank you, ESPN. Thank you for whoever thought about making this a, you know, thank you for the rest of the Chicago Bulls, that dynasty um, that's going to stretch this out for 10 episodes. Um, I want to thank all of them because it's about time that we get the document, the real deal document, not none of those back room joints, but a real deal document from ESPN, 30 for 30 style, on what most will recall as the GOAT. In the NBA, it's been we, it's been too long. We've been waiting on this. It's been too long. I don't know why why MJ been waiting so long to give us the goods because that's what they've been waiting on. He finally decided to give us the goods, and because of the coronavirus, they moved it up from June to April because it was supposed to originally be shown in June. I'm so happy to see this. I'm so excited to see this. Um, I have heard other players on record saying this will put Michael Jordan back up as the clear, uncut GOAT. No no discussion. No maybe LeBron. No maybe Kobe. I don't know. We'll see. I do think what it will do is for the younger players that don't quite remember Jordan playing days, all they do is hear about it where they'll be able to see this documentary and be able to put some visual with the audio now. I do think that. Um, I'm just... Personally, what I'm what I want to see the most is listen, I can't wait till they get into this whole I know they're gonna talk about this Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr thing. I can't wait to see this part. I, I want to see exactly how they paint that picture. I wanna see that. But you know, listen, this is a documentary that that is well overdue. We should have been got this. We just not getting it. It is what it is. Coming at a perfect time though, I guess, because when you think about it, what the hell else are we watching? So hey, bring it on. You know what? Matter of fact, we're gonna criticize it because it's coming on, I think, once a week or something. I want like twice a week, something along that line. So we want to know why we can't get it three times a week, but it is what it is. ESPN gonna milk that money until they get it dry. So I ain't mad at them. It's a good business tactic tactic. So let's do it. But I know I, I know Michael Jordan said before this came out, he he threw out a caveat to either today or yesterday saying that he's a little afraid of what this documentary is going to uncover. It's going to show, you know, the not-so-pleasant side of that dynasty of his time now. But at the end of the day, hey, if you watch this documentary and didn't know Michael Jordan did some negative thing, hey, go crawl back under that rock or go back, get back in that baby crib. Because most people that knew Michael Jordan knew he was a fierce comp- competitor. He liked to gamble. He stayed out all night. He was just blessed with the ability to not take it as serious as everybody else and still come out on top. It is what it is. 
So if you see, if you watch this documentary and say, oh my God, I didn't know he wasn't. I can't believe he did that Steve Kerr. I can't believe it. Listen. Yeah, you knock it off. He ain't LeBron James outside the court. This guy, this same guy that retired a few times, played golf and everything else. So answer your question, man. I'm just happy to get this this documentary going. I'm happy to see this side. I'm uh it's gonna remind me of a lot of things that I might have forgot during that time. So I can't wait to see that. And I do think when it's all said and done by by episode 10, that that conversation between Jordan, LeBron, uh, the, the select others, Kobe, Magic Johnson, the select others that's in that conversation has been the GOAT. I think the conversation will get a little more interesting. I think we will have a lot to say about that. And it probably help out our show once it's all said and done and we still got the coronavirus hanging around. Because there's going to be a lot to be said about the, the GOAT conversation as far as in the NBA. So I'm just excited to see all, all 10 episodes, man. I can't wait. And I want to salute ESPN and Michael Jordan for finally getting this done. Yeah, first of all, it's uh, it's content. It's something sports related that we can you know soak up during these difficult times. Uh, perhaps that's what 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 MJ was waiting for uh, the coronavirus. Oh, hey, nothing going on. I got all the attention <laughs> right now. Uh, also, you uh, shout out ESPN and the Bulls. Uh, how about all the uh, media members that uh, you know they pulled all these bits and pieces of information from? Yeah. I think we got to also remember that. Um, I want to say I read something ESPN pulled from like. You know, they spoke to a hundred different people uh, to, you know, pull all this together. So it was definitely quite an undertaking. Definitely excited to see how it turns out, how it looks. Um, and just, uh, I mean, it's been 22 years since Michael Jordan won his last title. And I know for myself, I mean, I was alive during this period, but I don't really have, you know, vivid memories of how he played for the Bulls. My only real memories of Jordan, I remember his couple seasons with the Wizards uh, briefly. But so this will definitely be something I look forward to, you know, to look at, you know, how he played, uh, what those, you know, those locker rooms were like. And that, that this is something like it's supposed to be high access. And that's one of the things we look at as fans, like give us more. What was those, you know, conversations between teammates really like what, what what were those practices about you know the co- between relationship between coach and player you mentioned Michael Jordan Steve Kerr um one of the things I remember about uh Kobe Bryant there was a conversation Stephen A. Smith revealed uh in, in route to his last championship after they lost game five to the Boston Celtics was they were down three two they were heading back to LA and Kobe's just you know fuming he's just you know PO'd and but Lamar Odom is on the plane is like just all chill like hey, it's gonna be fine man we're going back to LA it's gonna be good you know di- different things like that these are the types of things I'm thinking about and the the point you make about the goat conversation I think that's a valid one you talk about uh, a lot of the, the players that come in you know that they weren't even a, they didn't see Michael Jordan play at all so you gotta you gotta think that as time goes along and the more as long as LeBron stays around, it's just natural that he's going to pick up more and more steam, especially among the younger population. But with this something we can view at right now, it can give us a greater appreciation uh, for Michael Jordan. And I think you talk about, you know, how he's concerned that how it may make him look some of the, the, cause I'm that, that let's be honest. There's a price, there's a price to pay um, to win at that level, to have that type of competitive competitiveness we're gonna we're gonna see that but i mean everything comes with a price and the more you want something the more you work at it and the more time you spend in that it's gonna take time away uh uh, from other aspects uh, of your life so there's good and bad with everything but uh i think the more uh, as a fan the more access you get i think the better and uh i'm not gonna have any complaints based on that yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, I think one of the more interesting things when we look at it, like a dynasty like his or just when we talk about the GOAT conversation, it always kind of feels like, you know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but it's more like narratives. Like w- when people talk about it, they, it's either like when you talk about Jordan, right? It's either the narrative is he was the best thing ever walked. He never lost a game. You know, if he fell, he meant to fall. Like it was just like everything is just walks on water. And then there's the other side of it that's, oh, man, he suited up against janitors and mechanics and his tax account was on the other side of the court from him. And he didn't win anything without Pippen. And, 
and like you always think, well, like surely the, the the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? And in Jordan's case, it feels much closer to the walking on water side of things. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm you know 28, and I never got to really appreciate his time with the Bulls. I wasn't really a basketball fan until about middle to high school. So didn't really get a chance to ever appreciate this dynasty. So when I always hear like the LeBron Jordan debate, I always only ever had one side of that, but I always remember, well, yeah, I never got to see it in my own eyes. So seeing, having something like this to remind like people my age and even younger, like, Hey, this is, this is the dude we're talking about. This isn't just, this is outside of five minutes on Colin Cowherd's show or some crap like that. Like this is the real deal that you're going to get to see here in an access and in a way that no one's probably ever seen before you know they, they said for this uh, this documentary the access that the media was granted and the cameras are granted was something that they they purposely did but it's something they never up until that point had done before so that kind of inside look at what made this team tick and how you win three titles and then you take a year off just to do it and then you come back and win three more like it's nothing that's i can't imagine any team in this day and age doing that right so um, I, I am really looking forward to this. I'm really glad that ESPN made the, a very good decision to take what they had and move it up. So we have some, you know, filler, you know, in this time where there's just not nothing really going on. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it for uh, more reasons than one.